listen to me when I sing for you this melody to a song I say what I have to say sometimes it's the only thing that helps me through the day so many things on my
right now it is my happy privilege to turn the service over to Sister Rose. Please welcome as she comes. Amen. It's good to be here this morning. We're so glad for all of you that are here today. I hope that you came expecting something from God. If you come expecting, he'll not disappoint you. Too many times do we go to places where not, nothing much is going on. He'll be through here in a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> yes. It's so good to have you here today. I, uh, I listened to uh, Gene say that he follows his pastor. The message I'm preaching this morning is who are you following? Do you know who you following and where they going? Yeah, because if you follow somebody going the wrong way, you're going to end up the, in the wrong place. I'm preaching to you this morning from St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Father, we're grateful this morning for your blessings, for all that you've done for us. It's a privilege to be in your house today. We didn't have to be here, but we thank you for letting us be here. We praise you for every good and perfect gift comes from you, and we thank you for it. I pray, God, that you would minister to the people in this service that you would touch their hearts and their minds, cause them to take a look at where they're going and who they're going with. I pray, God, that your divine and perfect will would be done. We'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. Amen and amen. Yes, I'll try it now. Okay, the seventh chapter of St. Matthew says, Beware of false prophets. <clears throat> which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth uh, good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit you shall know them. So he let us know we can, we can find out who, who we follow in here because every, every good person does good things. People that are not good are doing some of everything. So he says you're going to know and watch their lives. I wonder how many people today... If you're at some other church or your pastor, and maybe you're just visiting here today, do you know who your pastor really is? Do you know what his goals are? Do you know his life? We've got to know, know our pastor's life. If you don't know their life, you don't really know who they are. It's got to be more than just coming to the pulpit. It's bigger than that. Okay, and then we honor them that's doing it right. Now, this week I happened to get the Charisma magazine. I get it ever so often. And I was, I'm not, I must say I'm not uh, shocked at what I saw. Listen to this. A few years ago, surveys were published which told us that over 50% of pastors surveyed in evangelical churches admitted to regularly viewing pornography. At first, I believe these numbers were exaggerated, but what I've seen in the last couple of years makes me wonder if the situation was actually understated. If this is true, these pastors are dispensing spiritual pollution into the hearts of those they minister to. Some attempt to portray pornography as just a weakness which godly men, can you believe this, which godly men are susceptible to. That's sick. It is not. It is a sin of the sort of which Paul told us, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The words of Jesus perfectly describe the condition of those to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Pornography is the open manifestation of both adultery and fornication in the heart of those who consume it. The Apostle Peter warned of teachers who were themselves enslaved in darkness. He said they speak great swelling words of vanity, 
but actually bringing the people of God back into the bondage of corruption. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. These teachers could preach about great liberty in Christ, but they did not possess that liberty because they themselves were prisoners of corruption. I'm not going to read all this, but I wanted you to see a little bit of what is going on in the, evangel in the evangelical world. When you, if you're in a church <clears throat> and this type of behavior is going on, by all means, you shouldn't be there. A leader cannot lead you down the right path unless they're going down the right path. That's for sure. <clears throat> what it boils down to, we got hypocrites in the pulpit that say one thing and do another. And it's not isolated. That's everywhere. People are doing this. Really, they're not interested in your soul, whether you go to heaven or hell. They're interested mainly in the money you put in the offering plate. God didn't call us about the money. He called us to help, to help souls, whatever we could do to help them. So he said, beware of them. That means be cautious. Be careful. Know who you are following. Because it can cost you your life. I was a person that never liked to ride with anybody that don't know where they're going because it works my nerves real bad. Because you're just going down the street, you're not quite sure if you can turn left or right, and, and then you go down and say, I think I did it wrong, and turn around. I, it just irritates me. So I can't imagine following somebody who say they're a preacher, say they're doing it right, but in actuality, if you look at their life, they're not there. They're not there. So I can remember there's nothing worse than being lost and can't find your way. Nothing is worse. And I've been in a position where people drove and got, and, and I was lost, aggravated. My son-in-law up here, he probably think, figured I was going to tell on him on this. <laughs> he was taking me somewhere. And I'm looking, the place we're supposed to be going, the airport is over here. But we're going out this way, and I'm trying to think, well, if it's over here, what are we going this way for? He said, just hold on, Mama, hold on. I'm going to get you there. I said, I hope so. And we kept riding and riding, going the wrong direction, going away from the airport instead of going to it. Well, if you're taking me to the airport, let's get on the right road, Amos, so that we can get there. That's been a few years ago, but it's true. I was so aggravated. And I sat there for a minute, I kept saying, I'm getting madder and madder. We, I'm stranded out here. Now, he's been, to, he's been to this destination more than once. How did you get lost today, especially with me? <laughs> and so he did. But my husband one time, when we go to, when I would go on vacation, I always look up different stores I can go shop in. So... <laughs> I was looking in the, in the, back then, a little bit later, you still could find it, some things in the yellow pages that don't exist no more. But he said, Rose, you stay here while I go and find the place. Because if he put me in that car and started that direction and we keep circling around and circling around over here and over there, and I always say, ask somebody if you don't know what you're doing. Have you noticed that most men do not like to ask people? That's, a tr that's the truth. They don't want to ask, am I going right? Can you tell me which, which way I should go? I said, ask somebody. Rose, I don't need to ask anybody. I know where I'm going. Okay. Well, it looks like you don't. So here we are. Stranded. So he said, I'll tell you what. I'll find the stores that you want to go to, but don't go with me. I'll come back. And when I get back, I will know where we're going. So I love that. And uh, the best, best decision he ever made. So... Let me say this, the people of God must stop and think because now we got more hypocrites in the pulpit now than we ever had. I mean, they are liars and homemongers and cheaters and some of everything. You better know just because he's in this pulpit, behind this podium does not mean he's right. It does not mean that. 
So I need to check this. Just go, well, he seems like a nice person. There's a lot of people that seem nice. There's a lot, a lot of people that look like they're okay, but let me tell you, they're not. I've been in the church all my life from the time I was a young girl. All my life. I've seen good preachers and I've seen some that shouldn't even profess that they are. You say, are you judging them? No, the word judges them right here. The word judges them. So if I'm going to follow somebody, usually I'm moving behind them in the same direction. To, to move behind someone and go where he or she is going, okay? The so-called leaders who profess that they're following God, you must know their lives because they're hypocrites. Yeah. There's nothing worse than a hypocrite. You know what? If, you, if you're not a Christian, just say I'm not a Christian. I don't have to lie about it. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Then people see you and say, I thought you said you were a Christian. There are some things that's asked of us through the word that we demonstrate our Christianity. If that's not there, we're not a Christian. But you tell people you are, and, I, and some of them use such profanity, and then they say, excuse my French. And I'm telling you the French people would be offended for you to use that. So understand this. I'm going to find out something about this church. Do not believe everything you see on the Internet because that ain't true. That ain't true. And so... Uh, I got to know what's going on here. I got to be careful what I'm doing because I'm trying to get to heaven. How am I going to get there if you're on your way to hell and I'm following you? No, 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 that cannot happen. We got more motivational speakers in the pulpit today than we have anything else. We don't need you to be a motivational speaker. We need you to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we need. The motivational speakers, I'm thinking, okay, you won't find one thing in the scripture that tells us that we need to be motivational speakers. He says, cry out against sin. Cry out against it. Speak loud where everybody can hear it. But don't sit up there and just say, well, you know what? I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a good person. Good people don't always go to heaven. If, if, good, if our goodness could take us there, Jesus would have never had to die. He died because we needed something more than that. So you got to understand just being a good person is not enough. you got to be a Christian. you got to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and say, I want to be a Christian. Take away the sin. Wash me and make me clean. That's what it's all about. That's what it's about. This is what Jesus says here in Matthew. He says, the scribes. And the Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. They always put themselves in somebody's position, except they not, shouldn't be there. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and they do not. So they tell you to do something, but they're not going to do it. Don't tell me that I need to do such and such a thing while you sit back and you don't do it. You should lead me. You should be the example. We as parents have to be examples to our kids. So if I tell my kids, you, can't, you shouldn't be smoking pot, you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol, I don't, my kids can't look, at back at, can't look back at me and say, well, mama, well, what are you doing? Oh, no, that's never going to happen. The same thing should be in the pulpit. If I tell you not to do something because the word says it, it's saying to you, don't do it. And I, as a, as a preacher... And I, as a preacher, need to be sure that my life measures up to the word of God. Otherwise, I shouldn't be up here talking to you. But it's, imp it's important that we have people that we can trust, that we can believe that they're telling us the truth. He said, well, they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. You expect me to do things you ain't even about to do. Uh, I, I heard a preacher one time say, well, Pulled out his checkbook and said, I'm going to write a check for uh, a couple hundred dollars. So if you are a millionaire, that's joking money. $200? Come on. But you know what? I truly believe a pastor 
or a minister ought to be a perfect example of what should be done and what shouldn't be done. Yes. But all their, work, all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogue. Please put me up here. No, sit back there at the back door back there. <laughs> you know, why, why do you have to have the best seat? Why do you have to be called to the pulpit? I don't mind calling people up here, but are you, are you really worthy to be up here? My son that comes and escort me out every Sunday, he said, Mama, every time I come to that platform and look at that audience, I think, boy, I couldn't handle this. I said, but you know what? You got a job to do. You, and you got to do it if you, that's the way I get to heaven. I get to heaven because I have a job to do what I need to do for you, and God has ordained me to do it, and if I don't do it, then I'm lost. Not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna be lost for anybody. And they have, and they love the uppermost thing. That they're so arrogant. In the Church of God in Christ that I was born and raised in all my life, boy, when I tell you they got some big head people in that church. They, I mean, when the when the bishop comes in or the state mama comes in, they call the state mother. I said mama, and so <laughs> come in. All these things they're saying, you know, stand up. So here's a bishop coming in there, Bishop Hearn. He's probably dead by now. It's been many years ago. He come in the church. He's married two women in the church, which the scripture says, if a man desire the office of a bishop, let him have one wife, not no two. And so when I went to, to the, one of the mothers in the church and I said, could you tell me why, brother, why Bishop Hearn got two wives sitting on the front row? She said, well, baby, some things we just don't mess with. I said, no, I want to know why he's doing that. I said, because the word says he shouldn't have two wives. So he done divorced her and married her, and they both sitting together. You don't think that's tacky? That's very tacky, and it's so out of order. I should be a, a woman that's got one husband. Yes. I don't have any now. My husband passed away. Am I looking for one? No way. No way. No way. They like the greetings in the markets and to be called a man rabbi, master. They love titles. So they want to want you to talk to them and address them as, as bishop and overseer and all these things. And all these titles mean nothing. You know, you can have a title that you are some of everything and don't fit any of them. Titles don't make people. People are who they are before a title is put on them. See? Listen. He says, call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. He says, look, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And, who, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. So God says, you walk around big head, think you all that, and, and you want to be recognized as Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so or whatever. He said, humble yourself. It's okay. I've had people to come to me so many times, so, so what, what, what would I call you? I said, Sister Rose. That, that's enough. You don't need no huge title running across here. Just Sister Rose. You brother so-and-so, you sister so-and-so, I am too. I just happen to have a different job than you have. But so, it doesn't have any real meaning to it. Say, whosoever shall... Exalt himself, God said, I'll bring you down. I'll make you look really bad because you want to exalt yourself up here where you think you look good. And so everybody will come around and, and say, well, I hear you that you're here. Oh, so good to meet you. We love honor from men and women. We love this type of pomp, if you will. It's just sickening when you see it. 
Why are you? And I'm trying to understand anybody that knows God and have a relationship with God. How in the world can you feel big? If you come into, the, into his presence, it is so mighty. It is so big. It's so overwhelming. My God, how did you stand up and, and look big? It can't happen. I remember how sweet it is to be received and not with a bunch of stuff attached to it. In Oklahoma, Occasionally, I would go to visit somebody's church, and I wasn't a pastor then, but people pretty much knew me from leading service and singing or whatever. So I called the pastor that day before I went over to be in service with him that night. I said, Bro- I said Brother Miller, I want to come over and be in service tonight. I said, please don't call my name, please. He said, well, why, Sister Rose, why would you know? I said, it's not necessary. I don't want everybody to turn around and say, where is she? <laughs> you know, you're trying to keep as low profile as you possibly can. And he said, I'm not going to promise you that. And I start not to go. I was so aggravated. I'm thinking, I'm asking you to do me a favor. Yeah. Just don't call me that. When I, when I got there, I got in the very back pew, kept my head down behind somebody else, and... He says, that's Sister Banks back there hiding out. <laughs> oh, my God. You talking about feel bad. And I, I said, he says, Sister Rose, come on up here. You don't belong back there. I said, I'm very comfortable back here. I don't need to be up front. Back here is fine. Let me tell you, if God don't call you to a job that puts you up front, don't look for one. Yeah. Don't look for one. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. People trying to get in, you ain't getting in, therefore people are held back. Don't get behind nobody that can't get in, because if he can't get in, he shouldn't be leading you. See, because something is wrong with that. Say, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense you make long prayers, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. He says, you're going through all this stuff. I invited a lady down here that I knew. She was a minister some years ago. We had opened up the church some other part of town, and I asked her to come when she prayed an opening prayer. Lord, have mercy. What did I ask for that for? That woman went on and on and on. I'm thinking, an opening prayer. And it just kept getting longer and longer and longer. People seemed restless, tense, and I'm sitting there thinking, why did I call on you? It ain't necessary. These long prayers doesn't make you righteous. It doesn't make you a good Christian. Listen. Said they got these long prayers, they want to be recognized. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye compare sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourself. They travel everywhere trying to get new converts, get new converts. If you, if you become a new convert under the wrong kind of person, you become just like them. You become just like them. So you got to know who, who is this person. What, am I allowing myself to be put in a position where I'm going to pick up what you call Christianity? No. Think about it, people. you got to make up in your mind, if I want to go to heaven, I better know who I'm following. It's important, very important. <laughs> Woe unto you blind guides which say, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing, but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Says you 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 swearing about the by the temple and what it is and from one thing to another and he said ye fools and blind for what is greater the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold which is the most while you putting all the emphasis over here what's the most important thing here he called them fools and blind that's that's an insult to those people. 
Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it and by all things thereon. And whoso shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it and by him that dwelleth therein. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. They want to pick something like this and they ain't living nothing. Well, why did you? So why, see, they're not living nothing. So they look at you, try to pick you on something. It, it, should you have that on? I mean, are you a Christian? Yes. You worried about me with something this big while you sitting around. He said, you gag at a net and swallow a camel. I tell you, that's pretty rough right there. See, think about it. Look, your life will speak for itself. You're either right or you're wrong. You're either holy or you're not holy. One of the others. He says, whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. Whosoever swear by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are all full of extortion and excess. You say, you didn't wash the cup before you drink out of it? What's the biggie? But he said, listen to this. Uh, you didn't wash that. I mean, the Pharisees, we have a lot of them all across this city right now. Pharisees that profess they know God uh, and go off on all these tangents about this and about that, and you're the one that's living right. They're not living right. They, so they're looking for something on you, no matter how small it is. I just want to think, I, if I can just say something's wrong with you. I don't think so. Either I'm doing it right or I'm doing it wrong. One or the other. <laughs> Listen, what, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for ye are like unto whitest sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. He says, Listen, you... You, you look the part out here, except you don't have it in here. See? She said, you're like white sepulchers that's beautiful on the outside. I don't know if you've ever been to the, to the Shrine of Remembrance here in town. I buried both my daughters and my husband there, and they're all crypts in there. They got different rooms where the, where the marble came from Italy. This came from uh, over here. A lot of foreign, beautiful marble, beautiful marble in every room you go in. But you know what? If you had to open it up, it's still dead stuff in there. It looks pretty outside. It's done very well. But there's dead bodies in there. No doubt may have a smell. They say more than likely it's not going to happen with those crypts, but may have one. But you, you go there and look at it and you think, oh, this is beautiful. Why don't you get you one? Crawl up in there. <laughs> See? Yeah, it's a nice sepulcher. But not a person in here want to go in there and live. Not a person want to go in there and say, can you open that up and let me get in there and try it out? Not a person. Because it's for dead people. And that's what he's telling them. You're dead people. You don't have any life. You don't have any anointing. You don't have any power. There you sit talking a bunch of talk. But at the end of the day, who are you? I got to live what I talk about. I got to live what I preach about. Yes. Even so, outwardly you appear righteous unto men, but within you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Don't try to make a hypocrite feel like he's okay. Tell him what it is. Hey, I thought you said you was a Christian. You over here using profanity and cursing and drinking booze and smoking cigarettes. You're not a Christian. Christians don't smoke cigarettes. They don't do that. They don't drink booze. They don't go to parties all night long. No, Christians have a standard, and it's called the standard of holiness. Yes. If you're going to be a Christian, it requires you to walk in a way that God accepts you. There is rules in this book that tell us what to do. You say, well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Well, God didn't ask you how you felt about it. He put it in the book. That's what you got to do. Listen, so he says, you scribes and Pharisees, ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchre of the righteous. 
and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Yes, you would have been there. You're now trying to say you're better than them. That they, they caused a lot of those people to be buried. They killed them. They brought them in a bad place. But now, if, if that was in our day, we wouldn't do that. You would do it. He said, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? How do you think you're going to escape it? He called you fools. He called you uh, snakes. He called you all kind of names in here. You say, well, ain't nobody going to call me no name. If the word calls you one, you one. Brother John Thomas at home, they, the people admired him because he said, if the word calls you a dog, you a dog through and through. Don't fight. Don't fight what's being said. At the end of the day, it is what it is. We try to fix everything to look nice. Yeah, just make everything, whitewash everything. That's what the, 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 that's what the prophets were talking about. You whitewash it. What do you do? You make it look okay for them to do that. And then in the end, they lose their soul because you told them they were okay. Preachers got to cry loud and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions. Show them their sin. Cause them to see that it's different from right and wrong, or from holy and unholy. They got to know you. They won't know if you don't tell them. Some people don't pick up their Bible to read it. Well, you as a pastor need to say that's a sin. I can't tell you how many people some years ago when I was sitting at the desk over here and shake people's hands, and you know what they would say to me at the desk? Sister Rose, I never knew that was a sin. Well, do you read your Bible? Your Bible will tell you what's sin and what's not. It'll tell you what you can do and what you can't do. It's all right here. You can't miss it. That's why you can't stand in the presence of God and say, well, Lord, I didn't know. It's right here. You can't miss it. But we as preachers have an obligation to preach the gospel and tell, call it out for what it is. And quit playing with it. And you as lay people need to call it out the way it is. And tell a preacher, preacher, you are no good. Yes. Behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. And some of them you shall kill and crucify. And some of them shall ye scourge in your, in your, in your synagogues. And persecute them from city to city. If you stand up for what's right, they want to kill you. What are you talking about? Read throughout scripture. You will find prophets. You will find apostles that suffered. Some of them were killed. They died martyrs because they told the truth. If you want to make somebody mad in this hour in which we live, tell the truth. They don't like you for truth. You know, she has just says things without thinking. No, I think and I see. That's right. You have to use tact. I did. <laughs> Here's tact. Here it is. Yeah. So understand this. He said, now, some of you are sheep and some of you are wolves. And the preachers, some of these preachers, they ain't nothing but wolves. You say, I just think she should. You don't tell me what to do. I'm going to go with it anyway. When you want to talk about me, you'll be out the door in a minute. <laughs> See, the nature of a sheep is like this. A sheep is a meek animal. They are usually very, very quiet and gentle, holding themselves aloof from the world. That's what the church needs to do. They're not sheep, though. You can't be a sheep and do what a goat does. There's difference in those animals. So if it says, he, he addressed us as sheep, that's the nature of a sheep. They stay in a group while grazing. They stay united so they can protect each other. They have nearly 360 degree visible, they can see. Let me show you what wolves are. They're predators. 
That's what preachers are. They're predators. They get you for one reason. I want to get your money. Come on in. You want to be a member? Come on in. Yeah, we welcome you. Sister, run. <laughs> what do you want with me? Why are you tracking me down? Wolves are predators. He said these, 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 these uh, preachers are wolves in sheep clothing. They look for other people in order to use control or harm them in some way. That's what a wolf does. One who injures or exploits others for personal gain and profit. Boy, that's what these preachers are about, personal gain. You don't do it, you're going to hell. No, you're going to hell, you're going to heaven if you don't. Don't give these liars nothing, don't support them. If you support them, they ain't going nowhere. That's a fact. The one who injures and exploits others for personal gain and profits ex exploits mark full use of, the, of a uh, and derive benefit from a, a resource. They are well equipped to take down a prey, an animal that is hunted and killed by another. That's where these preachers are. He said, I never thought about that. I wonder, should I be checking it out? I don't know where you came from this morning, but wherever you came from, check him out. Amen. Check her out. Doesn't matter. Check their lives to see if they measure up. Otherwise, it costs you your life. If you don't want to lose your life following somebody just because it's popular to, well, they got a large church. That's not a reason to follow people. That's not a reason. So you got to stop and, and look and say, you know what? I need to check things out. Everything that looks good ain't good. Everything they call gold ain't gold. Everything they call diamonds are not diamonds. So what is it? People that don't know quality stuff, don't know jewelry, whatever. Oh, you could sell them a ring and tell them this is a diamond ring. And I'm letting you have it for $20. You don't have a diamond ring. That's a joke. See, so if you don't know, you are easily taken in. That's why we got to know and have knowledge of what's going on so I don't go down that road. Tell me, Sister Rose, and I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm loving this this morning. Yes. What sorrow awaits she Await you, awaits you teachers of the law and Pharisees and hypocrites. You go anywhere to get you somebody that you call a member in your church. They're members. They're members. We, we got members too, but not just in and everybody. Okay, if you want to be a member, do, do you know what that means? They came in, somebody came in one, one Sunday and said, uh, 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 Sister Rose, can I get in the choir? You just been here the first time. I said, well, baby, you wouldn't get in the choir that quick. You just got here. Who are you? Where did you come from? Are you saved? Are you a Christian? You want me to just jump to this? I need to know your life. You see people up here singing. These are saved people. These people, are, they serving God. When the devil comes after you, nothing is worse than when he used a person that say they are Christian to come after you. Because we tend to trust them and say, you know, they, they're not trying to hurt people. Yes, they are. See? There were false prophets, he says, also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately just bring in, in, in damnable hearsays, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon them swift destruction. He said, back in that day, they were, they were false. You hear him say, sister, the Lord told me to tell you he's going to give you a brand new house. All you got to do is come up and put half your check in this place. You're going to get a house. You know that don't work in the natural. You're not getting ready to buy a, a house with a half, half of your check. That's a joke. Should we not think for a minute? How's that? How's suddenly me putting half in the plate gonna give me a house? Houses cost more than that. But if you're ignorant, you'll buy into it and say, "Well, he said it. He said the Lord told him." 
Why didn't God tell you? Wait a minute, everybody talking to you saying God said it, he didn't say it. He's, the scripture plainly tells us. If they come saying to you that God said it, he said you, you don't believe them. He said, I didn't send them. They speak out the imagination of their own heart. I didn't send them. Get to know people. People live in real, people that's real Christian, God does talk to them. It says, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. People talk about truth in a negative way. I just don't think it takes all that. It's just so and so and so. And so. It's going to take everything the Bible says it's going to take. You're looking for a way out to do it your way. It doesn't work like that. It's not your way that's going to make the difference. What's going to make the difference is when you do it like God said do it. He got a plan for all of us, every person. The, the, the Bible is the rule book. You can look in here and find out what God wants you to do at any given time, and you need to follow that. And through covetousness, they, with feign words, make merchandise of you. They talk this crap, and they'll use you in which to, to use you so they can you have some way in which to get the money. That's right. See? Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. God says, I'm going to get them for it. I'm going to get them. If God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample to those that after should live godly. So he says, let me tell you this. If God didn't spare them, he won't spare you. See, Sodom and Gomorrah was a city that was sinful. What was there? Homosexuals. A lady came to this church not long ago. She was a lesbian. She said to me, Sister Rose, so can I just quit doing everything else but still be a lesbian? I said, no, you cannot. To be a lesbian is a sin. And it was such a sin to when God looked down at Sodom and Gomorrah, he rained fire on, on that city, burned it up for that sin. Now, would God be fair today? It's okay for me to be a lesbian, but back there, he killed all those people for it because he hates that kind of sin. He hates sin in any form. I said, no, honey, you, you, you can't do that. I'm sitting there trying to figure out, why would you want to? Are you kidding me? I got to have another woman? That's hard. That's hard to deal with. Why, would I, why am I a woman and want another woman? You say, well, ain't nothing wrong with it. It may not be for you. Something is wrong with that picture. I told, I told, I told some two other uh, homosexual guys. I talked about about them. They were one was my insurance agent, and, and the other one was the was the girlfriend. And they came to the church, and and I didn't understand this. He said, "I said, Tom, I said, listen to what I'm telling you. Why would God let you be born a man, a male, and then make you want?" to have sex with another man. Why would, how cruel is that? That I got all the, everything in my body, it shows that I'm a man or I'm a woman. So why would God do that to you? That's cruel. We wouldn't even do that to our own kids. He said, no, I'm not gonna do that. They don't like to talk about it. Get off, God loves everybody. I didn't say he didn't love them. Of course he loves them. But he doesn't condone that. That's a sin. God hates it. It's an abomination. So I, don't, I don't like that. I don't want that to happen. So he burned up the city. That's for an example for us to look at this and say, so is homosexual a sin? Read the Bible. Is it a sin for you to have sex with somebody and you ain't married to them? Read the Bible. It's in there. 
So don't try to look for a way out. No, if you're not married, you're not supposed to be. Sister Rose, this is, this is, honey, where you come from? The tutors? I might have, but the word of God is still the same. It's still the same. They haven't changed. If God didn't like it then, he don't like it today. He said, I'm God and I change not. So what I am, I am, and I'm not going to change that. And so whether you approve or disapprove, it's not going to change. God said, I burn up a whole city for it, and I'll destroy you today for it the same way. Yes. Got to preach it like it is. If somebody asks you a question, tell them what the Bible says. This is not Sister Rose's doctrine. I didn't make this. So you can look at me funny, but I'm not the one. I'm the, I'm the messenger. I, I speak for it. And you better speak for it. False shepherds are everywhere. You got to determine in your own heart, I will not be led by one. They are everywhere. You look at them on the TV. All these different organizations and uh, ministries, as they call them. It's tragic. How many people? will lose their soul as a result of it and won't make it because somebody lied to them. There was a man that, this was a vision that a man saw. He, um, he dreamed that he went to hell. And when he got there, the preacher had told him back here there was no hell. And he said he started walking through the fire in hell. And every time he reached down to bring up somebody and look at them and drop them back down, he, reached, he kept going through the fire, just holding them up and looking at them. And said, one of the demon spirits there said, well, who are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for the preacher who lied to me and told me there was no hell. And now I'm here. People listen to the truth. The truth is what's going to set you free. The truth will be, give you happiness. The, most people don't like truth. The better, the better you lie, the better they like you. They think you're such a nice person. You know, she's really a sweet person. She ain't told them the truth about themselves. And they feel that way about me when they first meet me and say, you know what, Sister Rose, you're such a sweet person. I say, yeah, yeah, you're such a sweet person. Beautiful smile, yeah. Until I come down on that street where they live at, all of a sudden, I ain't cute. I ain't nothing. <laughs> Start looking at me like, uh, you ain't cute as I thought you were. Well, well, I don't care whether you think I am or not. I look in the mirror, it tells me what I want to see. Yeah, I don't need that. I have had some of the nicest, I thought was nicest people. They just love Sister Rose. Oh, honey, don't you love that woman? Don't, oh, my God. Just stay here for a few days. Amen. Hear the truth. Because that's all you're going to get from up here is the truth. Yeah. Well, it set you free. Yes. God said, therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned from their way on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. He said, church people, Many of them are traveling from place to place trying to find truth. Over here and over there, more and more, as time goes on, you're going to find we got less people who are getting the truth. They are literally starving to death spiritually. They don't have spiritual food. Why? He said the pastors did it to them. You got to answer for that. That's why as a pastor, I better do it right. And I want to do it right. I don't have a hard time doing it right. No. He says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, 
Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds take time to feed the flock? They're so busy getting fed off the things of this world, getting as much as they can, leaving you out there. I don't, I, I never forget when the pandemic first came and some of the churches had to close down and boy, these preachers was uptight because that meant where's my money at? I thought you don't need any. You got enough already. You don't need any. You know what they did? Uh, Kenneth Copeland, a lot of people may know him. He comes on the TV. I'm watching him. And he points his finger and said, let me tell you something. I don't care whether you can feel like you can get to this church or not. You better get here. You better bring those tithes to the church. And you better put them in here. If you have to slide them under the door, you get those tithes down here. Why didn't you ask me how was I doing during the pandemic? Why were you not asking me that? Why did you not ask me, do you do, why did I ask you, do you need something, honey? Is there some way we can help you? Uh, if you're not working, can we give you some food? Can we come over there? Why didn't you ask me that? And threatening the people of God. You better get down there and bring that money. I wouldn't take you a cent. You don't, you don't boss me around with my dollars. Tell me what I better do. I better do one thing, and that's live right and do what God tells me to do. And after that, nothing else counts. Yes. He said, what are they? They are hirelings. Hirelings work for hire. They work for money. He said, but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the shepherd or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. You ran like a scared jackrabbit running across. They're scared to death that they thought you was the shepherd. You was looking out for them, and you done took off running because all you wanted was the check anyway. No, preachers shouldn't live for money. No, if God bless you, gonna, you're going to get blessed with something. But that shouldn't be the reason you a preacher. Well, when we first started this church, there was no offering. There was no salary. There was nothing. And when the offering was taken up, it was mine. <laughs> no, for, I mean, maybe a year or two, there was no salary come to me. But I wasn't in it for salary. I was in it because God told me to preach the gospel. Yes. And to this day, I'm probably the biggest giver in the whole church. That's right. Just been nerves me to tell me this is all I got in my bank account. I, what's where are the other ones at? You can have more than one bank account. So you wrote a two hundred dollar check out of that one. Where where's the other banks with the with the millions in it? Trying to make me think you're trying to do something good. No, I don't. But I don't buy it. You said, do you trust anybody? Not really. No, those that are saved and living right, those people I trust. See. But you want, to, you want to check your life out and say, you know what? I better, I better know who I'm following. Take a look. Every, everything that says gold is not gold. Check it thoroughly. There's not a member in our church that don't know my life in and out, up and down, every kind of way. That's why you have to, ministers have respect from their audience when they believe they can trust you. I don't, mis I don't mistreat anybody. No. And I'm going to help the white as well as the black. We ain't got no uh, certain thing. Well, it, you ain't black, are you? <laughs> Reach out to people. You don't care what they look like. <laughs> I'm glad the Lord fixed that. Wouldn't it have been bad if he said, the only people I can help is white people. Where would we black people be today? We already got it hard enough. You definitely need God to be on your side. And you know what? He don't have no respect to persons. He loves me. He loves you. He made all of us. Why would he hate anybody? All souls belong to him. 
All of them. I was thinking this week, I said, God, I want to get the message across to black America. You better give your life to God because in this, on this planet, you just get killed for being black. It's uncomprehendable. Sometimes I look and think, I was so amazed the other day when they, got, when they found those three men, found them guilty. I almost started crying. I thought we finally won one. But most of the time, no. But the black people need to wake up. All people do, but black people are oppressed. They just kill you for being black. It's uncomprehendable. Every time I look up, you know, run somebody else down and, and don't have any reason. They're not bothering you or nothing. You're just going to kill people and walk away? And in this society, that's a possibility. It happens all the time. There, there's some of them the most likely not to, not to go to jail. Because from what I understand, those three men, they were not supposed to have gotten life. They was already working behind the scene. But you know what? Thank God. Thank God for justice. There's some white people mistreated. Don't get me wrong. But we outnumber you. What they do to us is disgusting. Sometimes you can't help but cry. You read another story and think, God, have mercy. This poor man put in prison, you're more likely, here's, here's statistics. Black people are more likely to go to prison from the time they are born. One out of so many, very few, is going to prison in their lifetime. And you, is three out of it? Three. That's more than likely going to prison. I'm still a baby. I just got here, please. Can I have some milk? Please give me a break. Yes. For you born, you are doomed to go to prison. That's amazing. This bothers me deep inside. I think, God, wake up the people. The black people better wake up because you don't stand a chance. Every once in a while, accidentally was not found guilty. You heard of the man been in prison for 43 years? 43 years, wrongfully convicted. Went in at 18. Couldn't believe it. And then come out and the state pays him no restitution for imprisoning this man for 43 years. You pay, you give him nothing because it have to be a DNA. If it ain't DNA, we don't pay. In prison is in prison. To swim. You got preachers who will not support the different races of people. No, I tell you, man, it ain't black. I don't fool with them. They ain't they white. Nah. You going to hell? When we get to heaven, there are gonna be black folks, white folks, all kind of folks in heaven. Uh, uh. No, that's not gonna happen. God made room for all of us. And you ain't going to be there because you miserable down here. No. Thank God for the victory. We can overcome. Fall in love with God. Fall in love with his word and do everything it tells you. It will help you. It will guide you down the right path and keep you off the wrong path. Everything God put in here was for our good. To benefit our lives. When he said from the beginning, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. You cannot do that. All the rules in place. And we have policemen killing people. What a tragedy. The people that are supposed to be there to help you. Yes. Can't happen. You say, how do you know? Sister Rose experienced it. I live, my family lived through it. It's hard. The man told me, I'm getting ready to close here. The man told me, he said, he was on CNN. I put a call into him. 
when I said, I want to talk to you about what happened to our guys. He said, Sister Rose, let me tell you something. If they were going to make anything past $25 million, they ain't letting a black man have it. No, you're not going to have it. They've done our men so bad that, that Homeland Security offered them $100 million for that software. He said, I could tell you then, they would do anything to keep a black man from having it. And did they? Yes. Sent the FBI to come over there and try to steal the software. And when they couldn't find it, they put our guys in jail. They worked hard. Night and day. And you look at this stuff and say, how could this be? You're supposed to be law enforcement, but you're a thief. I can't believe it. People, we need God. You're going to have to have him. If you ain't got God, you ain't got nothing. I thought back on that, I thought, I couldn't believe it. I, I, when they said found them guilty, I thought they did nothing. How could they be guilty? And they knew it. And the evidence, we're not letting that in for the jury to see that. Then how do you get a fair trial? How can a jury give you a fair verdict with, with information being withheld? It's a sick society. Walk it in God's way. Because the only way you're going to enjoy life in this world, you got to live it by this. If you don't live it by this, you're going to be miserable. Do what's right. Trust God. He'll be there for you. He'll be there for you. He'll get you through it. No matter what happened or what goes on, rest assured, he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You can count on God. And yet we take the other direction and follow the devil. He ain't going to do nothing but give you a hard time and a short time to do it in. Come on. Look at your life this morning. Where are you at? Who's leading you wrong? Whose voice are you listening to? Don't listen to the voice. When it sounds bad, it is bad. The old saying say, if it walk like a duck and quack like one, that's what it is. You got to back up. Know that God loves all of us in spite of who we are. And we as a people need to pull together and unite. One thing, one time we saw, well, probably more than once, but one time we saw a, a, a togetherness in this country when, when George Floyd was killed. We saw people from all overseas, everywhere. We had whites, Mexicans. You had Chinese. Every nationality you could see, people saw, this is wrong. You feel a man that brought, kill a man that brought home daylight, then turn around and say, well, we're going to try to appeal. Appeal what? There should be no appeal. You got your knee on his neck. Get a grip. People, the people of God that are coming together, white, black, red, yellow, anybody, come together. God is on our side helping us as we help each other. You be there. You can do anything in this world that is right and good if you do it according to this book. I thank God for you this morning. I hope that you giving it some thought. Think about it when you go home today. Who am I following? That joker, is he real? You start looking at him. Did you see that? I, I just kind of push that off. Don't push it off. That's right. Deal with it. Because yes. you following the wrong person, lead you down the wrong way. The scripture says, don't even follow a multitude to do yes. evil. Right. Don't get caught up with a cost of a crowd. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. You sitting here this morning, says, Sister Rose, you know what? I sure need a touch from God. I need a change in my heart. I need to get things right. I need to check out who my leader or um, whoever it, it may be, be it on your job, be it in the church, be it anywhere. We're led in some way by somebody. Check it out. Be sure it's right. You will not go wrong. Following wrong people can cost you your life. Literally. Yes. My blood, the man, he didn't let your drops fall. You know what? I know he'd find joy, find joy in every tear that I shed. Oh, seeing I'm glad, I'm glad the 
man did make party. Cause I know he'd give me more. He give me more than I could bear. Oh, see, and I'm glad that man, he just, he didn't create me. No love for one day. Man, he surely forsake me.